some fun targeting work. Ooh, Dakota's unsure. Oh, there we go. Yeah, just follow. No, you're not bailing out. Good girl. All right, go ahead and turn, go back the other way. Come on, Dakota. You can do it. She's always been a bit wobbly with targeting. <laughs> Grab a little closer on his leash. There you go. This is first time doing this here. Break. So adding, um, like when they can and can't jump on and jump off is really useful. A little leash pressure. Yeah, release. Good job. I know, you gotta get the back legs. Good job. All right, let's go. More. Come on. Yeah, good job. Break. Because it adds structure to something that's a little scary. He says, I got this, as long as I can sniff. Good job, bud. <laughs> All right, you go first. Good job, nice. Let's go. Good. You're a pro. This is our second time doing escalators. Piece of cake. His first time. <laughs> So it's kind of funny, um, he tends to stay in a down and slink off of here. Let's go. So he started walking um, down a couple of steps to get him to stand up. Cause we noticed he's so low and his tail drags when, um, when all of those escalator stairs meet together, which made us uncomfortable. So we just make sure we take a few steps uh, to make sure the dog is standing up before we go on and off. All right. There we go, nice. That was good. Better and better. Let's go. Good girl. He doesn't have to sit. As long as he's just with you, it's good. He looks much more calm. He's anticipating a bit. See, so Chris gives some pressure. We keep the pressure up so he doesn't get that slink down. Really good. So pressure up in the air is what I'm talking about. Dakota, you're a pro. Let's go. Good. Good job. Is it 10? Good job. That was a beautiful shepherd. Interested in us. Now, I'm just gonna do a sit. Good. Good job. Good job. Heel. Move into our vet. We'll just follow for a second. Just so it's not like walk by and done and she's allowed to look she stays in a beautiful heel if she gets super alert I will tap but if she struggles at all I have to change her eyesight it's not fair to make her just stare at a dog right in front of her and because uh, it's not about looking it's about how she looks but it gets to be a bit of a gray area if the dog's right in front of you so if I oh, she's kind of pushing the heel so I tapped at my 10 and let's say she didn't relax at all and I even go to a level that's valuable, like maybe a 30, and it just doesn't change. She's too keyed up. Well, if that's the case, then I definitely know I have to change her eyesight. It's not fair to try to correct her um, because emotionally she's struggling too much. That one's looking good. Let's go. Good, tight grip on the leash. Last thing you want is for the dog to like feel the leash go because they put a little bit of a resistance on. You know, if we had done that to him, we would have lost him, you know, because he definitely put the brakes on the first couple times. No. Good job. Yeah. Good girl. Let's go. My arm doesn't go out. It stays right by my side. So she doesn't bolt shoot out ahead of me and trip someone up. Especially if another dog had been up there. So keep that arm by your side heel. Don't let them get leverage on you by going way out. 
the only exception is when you're doing like engagement work, turns, working with your dog, working on obedience, totally different than this. He seems to be calming down. Up. Hey guys, so I just wanted to take this opportunity, you with these two, <laughs> take this opportunity to point something out with Dakota. Um, Dakota likes people, she's fine with people, it's not an issue, and there are no dogs around, and she was sitting, but as the kids are screaming and moving around, she hopped out of her sit. Dakota, sit. Good girl, all right. The reason it's important for me to point that out is because I talk about this all the time, but nothing lives in a vacuum. If your dog has issues with excitement and listening and they get excitement anxiety, like looking around, like seeing if someone's gonna come up or maybe they're just feeding off of the energy around them, you're not gonna get them to overcome reactivity or nervousness or anything like that. So anyway, I just wanted to point that out. Is it, it does, the intent does matter, like intent behind the brain, behind whatever they're feeling. It does matter. However, you, you can't ignore opportunities to teach your dog to listen when they're friendly or overexcited or a little jittery excited. Because if you can't control excitement, jitteriness, um, then, then you're not certainly not going to be able to control anxiety, nervousness, reactivity. So my point is I see one of the biggest mistakes with owners is I see them letting go all of these little things that have to do with excitement. And then they're expecting their dog to listen when they're anxious, nervous, reactive. And that's just not fair. It doesn't make any sense to them. So impulse control all the way, consistency. And if you are struggling with reactivity or nervousness, also set up some scenarios where you struggle with your dog with just excitement. Could be a critter, people coming in the door, people petting your dog and then moving away, kids playing at a park. Go work on the excitement stuff first and that will give you a much better uh, better connection, bond, relationship with your dog to handle the nervous issues. Okay, so we are waiting a long time for a table. It's like an hour, hour and a half. And so we've done everything there is to do. So we're just sitting here. And then we see some friends of ours. We used to take dance forever ago. And we saw some of uh, some friends of ours from that, Chris and I. And they have this little uh, shih tzu and it just came running up on a long leash and, or a flexi leash. She doesn't have muzzle on right now. I thought I would work her without muzzle. I mean, who has, you know, off-leash dogs at the mall? Nobody. But they did let their dog rush gravy, and, gra and Chris was able to catch it very quickly. And then what I did was I smiled really big, and I said, I said, sorry one second. As I got up, come here, pup. So she was right here. Sit. Take your time. There we go. Good girl. So she was right here. I'm sitting. They come up right there and I'm, and I go, Oh, Hey, sorry. And I get up and I take a few steps. I have her hop up here. I explain to them that she's not friendly. Good girl. Let's go sit. <laughs> Labradoodle that one Labradoodle. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, they walk up and then we can have a nice conversation with them, you know? And if I hadn't had the, the step to block the little Shih Tzu, um, I would have just had her here a little bit behind me. Now, they, while they were talking, they're just used to letting their dog do their thing. And so the dog did put their front paws up on here and Chris, while laughing and smiling, blocked their little dog very, very softly immediately. Just kind of like a, 
like a this kind of situation. And so we're always advocating for the dogs as well as being as nice as we can, especially to people we know, of course. But, um, but anyway, just keep that in mind, guys. You're always teaching your dog how you want them to react in that moment. That's super important. Yeah, yeah, just, just give up. We'll deal with it later. I'm trying to get it out. <laughs> take it up the whole, the whole aisle, no big deal. We're by the exit. So it's, it's really not that big of a deal. Otherwise, I would have to move her. When we first walked up, I've got this this guy, Gravy, here. We've got kids and stuff. I, I'm not going to show them. That's not fair. But we have um, three kids moving around constantly. So he does... No, sorry. Down. He does keep getting up thinking he can engage. Anyway, when we first got here, uh, these tables were sandwiched together. We had no room. I had Dakota laying here. I kid you not. <laughs> and we, we had people... Um, coming in and out, including some little dogs. But now that it's calmed down, I put her on the floor like a real dog. But it's kind of funny. Anyway, good girl. Good job. Good puppies. Good job. <laughs>